my Instagram posts so I never lose them. Bubbles, I knew there was a reason I hired you. What's up everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to get a user's post with the Instagram Graph API PHP SDK. By the end of this video we'll have a script where we pass along the username we want to get back posts for, and the posts come back in the media array. Here you see for programmer.me, the username we specified, we get back their data. And each array in the data array is a post. And here's all the things that we get back for each of the posts. We get their username, the caption, the like count, comment count, timestamp, where it was posted to, the media type, who the owner is, permalink, that's a link to the post, and then the media URL. This is just a single image. You'll see that if we scroll down here, we'll probably find a carousel one. So this post here is a carousel album. And then we get back the children, which is each of the items in that carousel. We're going to begin over on GitHub in our repository, Instagram Graph API PHP SDK. The link will be in the description below. We're going to head over to the wiki tab and we're going to scroll down to the endpoint. For this video, we're looking at the IG user business discovery. Click on that. And here is the documentation for how to use this endpoint. And here's the code snippet that we want to copy for getting a user's post. And we're going to paste that in our editor. Here we're using our class business discovery from the PHP SDK. To use the class, we need to specify some config parameters. We have our user ID, which is the user ID making the request, the username, the account on Instagram we want to get the post for, and then of course we have our access token. If you don't know how to get the user ID or you don't know how to get the access token, I've created separate videos for each of these in my playlist on YouTube, the Instagram Graph API PHP SDK playlist. Go check it out on YouTube, or you can get the link by simply going to the wiki homepage and clicking on the YouTube tutorial link right here. That should take you right to my Instagram Graph API PHP playlist. So you see here's the access token video and then here's the account ID video. Once you have your Instagram user account ID, place that right here. Then we specify the user's name on Instagram whose posts you want to get. For this tutorial, I'm looking at programmer.me. Then once you get your access token, you will place that right here as well. And that's the config array that we pass into our business discovery class when we create it. Then all we have to do to get the user's posts is call the get self on our business discovery. So we're going to print out our user business discovery variable. Then we're going to hit our igtest.php script and the user's posts have been returned to us. Up here we have the information on the actual user account itself, such as like username, biography, profile picture, followers, follows count, total media count, and so on. But for this video, we're looking at the media array, which is all of their posts. And like I said before, each of these is a post, and this is all the information we're getting back for each of the posts. And you see how easy the PHP SDK makes it so you can get a user's post back. Just a few lines of code here, we have all their posts. Now, this get self function also can take in custom parameters. Let's say, for example, you only wanted the username, and then for each media, you only wanted the ID and the caption. How do we do that? Well, we're going to create a custom params array right here, and we're going to populate it with what the endpoint requires. So if we hop over to the actual documentation, we're under the IG user, and then we're going to click business discovery. Here you see the endpoint is just the user ID, and then the fields, business discovery, username, and here's where you specify that username. And all this is what the PHP SDK takes care of for you. However, if we want to do a custom example, we have to actually specify this field string right here. So we're going to copy this, and the parameter name is fields. Over in our params array, we're going to go fields, and then here's where we place our string. We're going to place our username right here. And after our username, we can open up a bracket. Inside of these brackets right here, we're going to request back what we want to get for this user. So we said we wanted the username, and let's also return their media account. And obviously, we want to get their media, comma, media. And for each media, we want to request back the ID and the caption. So we're going to open up another curly bracket right here. And whatever we put in here, we're going to get back for every media, ID and caption. Now we're going to pass along our custom params array to the get self function. And we're going to run this script again. And now you see we have a lot less data coming back. We have only the username and the media account, which we requested, and the media array compared to all of the fields. So by default, the SDK will try to return all the fields. If you want less fields, just have to pass along custom parameters. And for every media that we got back, we only got the ID and the caption for each one. Let's go a little bit further and request the children. Children are contained within media, so we have to place the children right inside of these curly brackets. How much children? And now we can even request what we want to get back for the children. So we open up another set of curly brackets and let's just get back the ID and the media type. Now if there are children, if the media type is a carousel album, we will see children with only the ID and the media type. Let's run our script here once again. The second post down, this is an album, so we got children back. And for each of the children, we got the ID of that child and the media type. And that is how you use custom parameters when making a call to get users posts. And of course you can customize the fields and put whatever you want in there for whatever you need to get back. Now we can make the call custom parameters and without custom parameters. 
there's one other thing we're going to look at. Here I am, I got the users post back, but you will notice that there is only 25 posts being returned. And then there is this paging cursors. What this is, is basically Facebook says, if there's more posts, we have to call the second page. And the SDK goes ahead and takes care of this for you. It generates a paging next link and a paging previous link. If there isn't one, that means there's nothing to get. Since we're on the first page here, we only have a next link and we don't have a previous link. And with just a few more lines of code, we can get our next and our previous pages. First, we're going to check for the next link over here in our response, which we do. That means we're going to go ahead and hit that endpoint and get the next page. We call business discovery, get media page, and then we specify the next page. We're going to do the same for our previous page. We're going to be looking for paging previous link. Call this previous page. And into our get media page, instead of next, we pass in previous. Now, in order to access these params, we're going to have to use our request params class. And the params class just holds a bunch of constants that are strings that we can use to pass along to the API. Right now, we're targeting our next and our previous. So let's go ahead and dump out our original call, get rid of the die. Let's also print out our next page and our previous page. Let's put some titles on the top of each of these ifs next and previous. Here we're printing out our first call, which will in turn give us our next page. Then we will get our next page by calling get media page. That will return us our next page and then we will print out our next page. Then we will be on page two. And so now we're gonna do a check for the previous page, which we should have. So then we're gonna get the previous page, which is page one, and then we're gonna print that out. So we should see page one, the first 25 posts, the second 25 posts, and then the first 25 posts again. And refreshing our page, here we go, we got our first call, business discovery, first page. First caption, remember, join programmer.me and learn programming. That is the most recent post. Scroll all the way down to the 25th post, here it is. And we see we only have an after cursor because we don't have a previous page, we're on the first page, our paging next link has been generated, and we have made another call then right here. Here's our next title, and here's our next response. First caption here is not the same, so we know that we're on the second page. So let's go ahead and scroll all the way down to the 25th post here. And now you see our paging cursors returns a before and an after. We're on page two, so we can go back to page one, or we can go to page three. Scrolling down a little bit farther, we should see our previous title here, previous, and here's our previous response, which should be back to the first page, because we requested our previous page when we were on the second page. And you see the caption is, join programming and learn programming. We're back to page one. And scrolling all the way to the bottom, you see we only have an after cursor, not a before. We're on page one, we can only go to page two. That is how you use the Instagram Graph API PHP SDK to get a user's post. By default, the SDK will try to return all the fields for you. We then looked at how to get custom fields back in case you want to specify exactly what you want to return from the Instagram Graph API. Then finally, we went over paging through those users' posts, getting the next page and the previous pages. And that is going to wrap up getting users' posts with the Instagram Graph API PHP SDK. I hope this video helped you out. I hope this SDK makes it easier for you to get what you want out of the Instagram Graph API because I know working with Instagram Graph API can be frustrating. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.